Welcome to the SEED podcast with the SEED investment team. This is Lisa Paulson, investment analyst in Cape Town. And today, I want to explore with you the influence of social media on investor biases and decision making. As an advisor servicing a client that is exposed to a digital minefield of information, it is important to understand the link between social media and the way that investors behave. A prime example of this dynamic was the GameStop drama that occurred in January of this year. What happened was that an investor in GameStop, a failing electronic games retailer, used their social media network to encourage gamers to purchase GameStop stock in an attempt to support the business. This interaction took place on Wall Street Bets. Wall Street Bets is a Reddit thread of 9.4 million subscribers. Subsequently, other platforms picked up on the increased postings on the stock. Within a seven-day period, from the 20th to the 27th of January, 1.5 million tweets and almost 1,500 YouTube videos were posted about GameStop as millions rushed to buy shares in the company. The result? A leap of 1,700% in the GameStop stock price within one week. So my question is this, do you really understand the power that social media has to influence your client? In the past, successful investment decision making was based on knowledge gathered from either traditional media, like newspapers, television, radio, trade publications, professional advice, or in-depth research. Well, with the rise of the internet, a lot has changed. In the last two decades, the internet explosion has provided instant and unlimited access to an overload of information. Posts from friends, news headlines, adverts, you name it. This content affronts our senses and deeply influences our opinions on a subconscious level, whether we want to know it or not. Let's explore biases. Social media accentuates investor biases particularly confirmation bias. Would you not agree that we tend to follow mostly or even only influences that we agree with and that share our point of view? Herd behavior is also exasperated by social media and is driven by the intrinsic human fear of missing out. In modern terms, this has been dubbed FOMO. The very thought of anyone else doing something that we are not doing ourselves make us feel uncomfortable especially if we think we are missing out on a financial reward. We tend to try and avoid FOMO by prioritizing products and ideas that are popular amongst our network. Often without conducting the necessary research, we follow the herd. Let's again consider the GameStop debacle. There was a direct relation between social media mentions of GameStop and the rise in the stock price. While this surge in the price of GameStop was unprecedented, the social media impact on investing is nothing new. In fact, research shows that 30% of investment professionals consciously use information obtained through social media to influence an investment recommendation or decision. Many more do so subconsciously. This is understandable because when significant market events occur, it is challenging to organize what is actually happening especially within a 24-hour news cycle and constant chatter from social media channels. While most institutional investors get and provide their information through Twitter news feeds and LinkedIn, more novice investors tend to turn to Reddit and YouTube for investing information and recommendations. So let's get an overview of the main social media platforms. How does Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and various other platforms influence investors. Let's start with Twitter. Twitter has become the most immediate and up-to-date source of news on the planet. Stories often break on the platform hours before major news corporations have even mentioned them. And it undeniably serves as a tool for market participants to try and keep abreast of breaking news and industry developments. The danger is that there often isn't a clear distinction between facts and opinions. And for the individual investor, this can be difficult to discern. 
Even trusted investment professionals may provide information that is speculative and based on emotion without stating as much. Can you imagine the influence that this could have and the damage that it could do? Investors tend to trust what the experts say. LinkedIn, on the other hand, is often used by investors to carry out due diligence on investments, industries, advisors, and even asset managers. In fact, did you know that as much as 73% of investors use LinkedIn to do research? The power of LinkedIn is that investors can connect directly to experts in any industry. This is a great tool for obtaining insights into the market with the added benefit that the content on LinkedIn is exclusively professional. And then there's Facebook. Facebook is often subconsciously used as a tool to gauge public sentiment. Another important consideration is your audience demographic, particularly age. Younger investors tend to spend more time on social media and are more influenced by it when managing their investments. Older investors tend to value the more traditional methods. So how do you, as an advisor, navigate this influence? Urge your clients to consider the following tips when attempting to gain knowledge from social media. Firstly, pay close attention to the source. We live in an era of fake news and misinformation and social media increases the risk of one falling victim to this. Secondly, educate yourself on which sources are trustworthy. This will assist you in filtering information. And lastly, when coming across information and you feel prompted to act on it, don't. Do further research or reach out to your advisor. As an advisor, a key role that you will continually play in your client's journey is to guide them and encourage them to not act on impulse. The investment team and I are excited to explore some more topics with you in the coming weeks, and we would love to know how we can guide you on your advisor journey. If you have any questions or topics that you would like us to explore, please let us know. You can send an email with your questions to communications at seedinvestments.co.za. That is communications at seedinvestments.co.za. You can also visit the Seed Investments website at seedinvestments.co.za. If you have not subscribed and would like to keep in touch with the team, please go ahead and subscribe now. To close this off with the old saying, any investment that sounds too good to be true probably is.